Hello world. I'm Summer, which you probably know that if you're here already. Yeah, this is so weird. I know I'm trying out vlogging for the first time. If you're watching this, you probably are familiar with my social media and have seen how I you know, am quite opinionated and really transparent on social media with you all. I'm from that for years now and I don't know, I find the format and the medium of Instagram kind of being limiting for what I want. I write a lot, but also I just want to talk. I decided to try and just put all all of it in one place, which is here. And I'm excited and I'm nervous. I've shared a lot on social media about who I am, but I think it's important and long-winded, which is why I wanted to do it in a video session of who I am and why I care about this. And I grew up in a pretty dysfunctional home full of um, some trauma and addiction. And so much of the things I talk about come from our childhood trauma and healing that which we experienced in childhood. So it only makes sense for me to like kind of go there and start there with mine. Long story short, parents divorced at a really young age, both struggled with addiction. I'm fortunate for my parents in a lot of ways and have healed relationships with both of them now. I definitely experienced some abandonment from my mom's side and then addiction from my dad's side. And so went through my life navigating that and then found church when I was in elementary school or middle school. It's weird, I used to live in Memphis, Tennessee and this this like bus would come through our apartment complex, which now I know they were looking for like underprivileged poor kids to bring to church. But for me, I just thought it was fun. So I was always dressed and ready to go. Like my parents weren't religious, was never pressured into religion, but just always found my way there. We moved to Alabama after that and found myself back in church and eventually um, in middle school, my brother who is, two, who is two years older than I am was dating. This girl and the youth minister was like, hey, just in case, just so you know, if y'all break up, I want you to come back. And of course they broke up because they were like 13. And so we went back and church for me, that is probably the beginning of what consciously started shaping me into who I am today. Church for me at a young age of being a teenager was the first like safe and structured place for me and also it was the first place that I tapped into my curiosity and intellect and was rewarded for it. Probably the first place where I realized my love for the abstract and that which is hard to answer. So I was asking questions at a really young age such as like, if God's real, why is all this pain in the world? If God is love, why is this happening? And what's really interesting about my journey with Christianity is that the God that I was given at a young age was not the God of Oh, if you drink, you're going to hell. And if you have sex, you're going to hell. And not this elitist God, but a God that was cared about the poor and that wanted you to love all people and cared about gay people. And most importantly for me, was a God that loved me as their child. And so that became really important because in high school, the term, my earthly parents may fail me, but my heavenly parent never will, became like my lifesaver and my motto. Yeah, so I, I started working this church camp after high school. Um, it was such a stark contrast to my college experience. I was in college at the University of Alabama. I joined a sorority and I hated it. I was miserable. My freshman year of college, I remember feeling so empty and sad, just being surrounded by like such, looking back on it, like escapism and avoidance. But, you know, it was all about drinking and sex. And also it was like extremely racist and extremely problematic. And I felt so misunderstood and alone. And that was probably also some of the beginning of me starting to feel like I was a problem for not wanting to get drunk and have sex every night. And it's interesting because I had come, I was coming out of this belief that because I was raised in purity culture, so I definitely was still operating under like waiting until marriage. But I was coming out of that and starting to be like, oh, like I do like sexuality. But it was either like purity culture, wait till you're married, or go get drunk and have sex with whoever wants to. And I didn't feel like I fit in either of those. And so that was really lonely. And so I started working this church camp the summer after my freshman year of college. And it was so healing for me at the time like i will never remember like never forget going there feeling so utterly broken and like letting these people that i had just met kind of help piece me back together 
and it was this place that was centered on loving one another and being there for one another but also like i got to exercise that intellectualism of like ah, i know all these bad things are happening but like this god loves us and loves us so much and so what do we do with that i continued that for a couple years and i can now look back and see the ways that my attachment formed by my, my parents absence really played a role in how desperately i really needed god to be real a certain type of god like parental god that kind of played itself out for a little bit and then i ended up meeting my now ex-husband at that camp and he and i i have like nothing but absolute positive things to say about him and even our relationship at this point we met when we were 19 got married at 22 and divorced at 24 and we were just children like we were literally just children in a pretty religious space and also both extremely struggling with codependence codependency in different ways i won't speak for him but for me it was my earthly parents may fail me but my god never will but meanwhile someone please save me while i'm here someone please take this pain away and help me and that's something to be honest like i still struggle with to this day and have done enormous and like copious amounts of work on but this belief that i am not okay by myself i'm broken i'm I need help and saving and for so many of us that looks like a romantic partner and that's what it was for me so we met I moved to Nashville and honestly we had a really sweet relationship despite how codependent it was what I now know is romantic relationships are where our ultimate triggers come out and where we project most of our wounding from childhood and I didn't know that then but that was, I was experiencing that with him. And I've been very vocal on social media about the ways that religion, codependency, and purity culture, and childhood wounding shaped me and my story. And the ways that I, there's also interwoven, but how I have to like in, pull the string out from each one and healing. And so our relationship our marriage started at the beginning of my divinity school career. So for those of you who don't know what that is, it's like seminary, but it's getting a master's of divinity, which basically means we study theology. And that's like a Harry Potter degree to some people. And then to other people, it's, oh, you believe every word of the Bible as reality. And it's difficult because not many people really understand what exactly goes on at a master of divinity program, especially at a progressive school like Vanderbilt, where I was. Getting married and experiencing a young marriage rooted in codependency while being in divinity school which for me ended up being the ultimate like shattering of everything i thought i believed and knew and i would never trade it i value that experience so much but it was probably it was one of the hardest times of my life i probably spent most of those three years crying and I ended up writing my thesis for that degree on how our attachment styles, which is the language I used then, now I would probably tweak it a little, but basically how our childhood wounding, so the needs we did or did not get met in childhood, impact the ways we relate to whatever God we choose to believe in. And that is something that was so hard for me. Like I had heard that you go to divinity school to deconstruct what you believe and then to reconstruct. So you go in with the set of beliefs, it kind of takes them away and then you pick up the pieces. What I did not know and what I do not think was given enough credit and what I think was heavily informed by my childhood upbringing was the grief and the wounding that came from deconstruction. Losing God for me felt like losing that third parent it felt like being abandoned all over again and it felt like absolute removal of all safety it felt like confirmation that i was alone and always would be alone and it was devastating it was so devastating and that for me happened so 2020 began and i was in my last year of divinity school january 2020 my ex and i split I 
probably fall of 2019, early 2020 is when I finally realized that like relationship, for lack of a better term, not with my ex, but with Christianity that I had poured my entire world into. Like I was preaching for all these churches and for these youth retreats. I had won awards, I had won money. I, I had devoted everything I had to this concept and it was no longer what I needed it to be. So the fall of that, the fall of marriage, which for me was absolutely devastating in terms of the existential reality that came with that. Like you make a vow and you have this piece of paper and all of that means you're with someone for the rest of this one life. And then in reality, it's just a piece of paper and marriage is just a social construct. And yes, there are promises and there's beauty in it, but we were hurting each other and we were so miserable. And the fact that we both experienced so much shame for choosing to leave and build something else was devastating. And then with the pandemic, the world shut down. So all of that, which I knew to be true and real was no longer. Like my job had laid me off. We were forced indoors. People are dying. The government's putting money in my bank account, which feels like a fever dream. So all that I had once staked my reality in was shattered within six months of each other. And it, I mean, it left me absolutely broken, which is why I ended up leaving Nashville and coming back to Alabama to be around family and friends because I literally did. It's like the term I wasn't okay doesn't even do it justice. I could not see what was in front of me. I could not see who I was. Um, I was so lost. I was so, so, so lost. And so it's really since then I have been like documenting my pain and life and joys all over social media. And I think since then I have done a lot of healing, but healing isn't linear and a lot of things pop back up, which kind of leads us, I mean, I know that kind of ended at three years ago, but where I'm at now is at a place at looking at my last three years and seeing how so many decisions I've made were so out of lack of like conscious living for myself because I had not grieved. Like I hadn't really sat with what I had been through. And so I spent the pandemic, like most people, just drinking a ton. I was like riding bikes with my like three friends that I allowed myself to see. I was working because I think as I had to. And I remember when the pandemic started post-divorce, I was so angry at the church and like my marriage and all those who like, I don't know, it's weird, right? Like people aren't like outwardly mad at you for getting divorced, but they kind of, they, they don't like it. They don't want that. And I was angry at purity culture and I was angry at the fact that I couldn't be who I thought these people wanted me to be. It was a mixture of things. Like I self-sabotaged by pushing people away because I was so scared that they would be disappointed in my decision. But also I was so angry at like the world that led me to those people and the fact that so much of my pain for my marriage came from shame from purity culture. Like I didn't know how to enjoy my sexuality. I didn't know my body. I didn't know what I wanted. or And then I started to know what I want, but I felt so much guilt and shame around it. So I really, I cut off most people of that time in my life. Like absolutely burned the bridges down, riddled in anger. I have done what I call an apology tour a few times. And also in that, I really let the pendulum swing to hypersexualizing myself. Um, I was so angry at purity culture and Christianity for taking away what I thought then was such an important time in my life to be sexual and free that I, and mind you, I also experienced this like hypersexualization from an early age from like my mom who really valued how she looks because of generational trauma. And so I just fully like dove head first into that. And I wanted the world to know that I was in control of my body and I would do whatever I wanted to with it. Um, but I'm still me and still like got emotionally attached. So I ended up getting into a extremely toxic relationship that it was very toxic. And it made sense that it happened because of how much I needed to be involved in the complete opposite of what my life had been. 
And I feel sad for that version of me. I feel such sadness for the version of me from like 2020 to 2022. Um, I feel a lot of sadness for her. She was really lost. She was drinking a lot, hypersexualizing herself, really just like needing male validation, which I have a lot of compassion for because that is not all my fault or her fault. That comes from the world making billions of dollars off of me feeling beautiful patriarchy telling me that like a man's love is the best thing I can get and lack of proper nurturing as a child. Um, so yeah, I I spent those years doing that, which kind of leads us to where we are now. So I'm back in grad school. I finished in May. I'm in school to be a therapist and I decided after my MDiv that I knew I didn't want to go to ministry and I had started therapy while I was in that degree and it changed my life. I became super attached to my therapist. We've worked through that. I've been seeing her weekly for five years and I could just go on and on and on about the ways it's changed my life. Um, so yeah, I'm in grad school to be a therapist, which is difficult and really rewarding. And at the same time, it's one-on-one -on -one and it's not accessible for a lot of people. And it's really reminding me of my humanness, like both as a client in my own therapist's office, but also as people's therapist. And I think that kind of leads me to why I care so much about this and where like when I sit with myself and get to the like really still small voice, what matters the most to me is connection and interconnection through our humanity and how, I don't know, like people sit in my office day after day or I sit in my therapist's office and I'm, I'm sad and I'm anxious and there's so much grief and trauma and I feel so alone and misunderstood. And I, I just wish we all knew that we all felt that way. So, yeah, that's kind of where I'm at right now. There's so much more to unpack that I can't like do in this video that I want. Like the reason I'm starting this is because I want to talk about like lack of maternal love and hypersexualization and how that leads us into relationships or how Christianity breeds codependency. I mean, there's just so many things I care about. Monogamy, non-monogamy, the pain of existence, like my anxiety waves from two to five every day and how it makes me feel like I'm an utter failure. There's just so many things and so this is a long wooden intro video, but that's a little bit about like my journey and what has shaped me and why like the pillars I end up going back to or like childhood trauma, deconstruction of God or any ideology that has like forced itself on you and made you live according to this like string of shoulds or what you feel expected to do, but what you don't actually wanna do. Because so much of this time for me has been learning how to get in touch with my body and really learning how to take up space and realize what I want. And sometimes that looks like burning your old life down and seeing who remains. Um, and other times it's like a really gentle movement into practicing taking up space. So my camera died. Um, but yeah, what I was saying is I'm just super excited to like take up space in this way and explore it all. I just rewatched what I recorded initially. And there really is just so much I like want to say and talk about. And I'm like, super excited to like navigate through with y'all. So yeah, I'm about to eat some vegetable soup and then go bartend, which could be a whole video within and of itself. So this is my baby.